All right. So first of all, I want to um, just address um, some issues about the um, uh, COVID at the moment in our hospitals. So at the moment, uh, there's about 522 people that are in hospital today, and I've just been advised by the health minister that by tomorrow that's going up to 613. So I do want to say to Queenslanders that um, COVID is out there. There's a lot of people at the moment who do have it. Um, and please uh, make sure that you are monitoring uh, your symptoms. If you have not had COVID, um, please uh, take care, but also to, um, as a general rule for everybody, if you are sick, stay at home. Some people at the moment don't know if they've got the flu or if they've got COVID. Um, please err on the side of caution. And if you are sick, uh, think seriously about staying at home. And it's probably also a timely reminder, if you haven't had your booster and you're due to get your booster coming into winter, uh, please do so. Uh, the Health Minister also advised Cabinet there's about 1,600 staff um, that currently aren't at work at the moment either uh, due to whether they have um, COVID or um, the flu at the moment. So uh, that's putting some extra strain on our hospitals. Yeah. Definitely ruled out. We're not doing a mask mandate, uh, but there are discussions happening about um, urging people in certain situations to wear masks, but there's still ongoing discussions about that. So if anything changes, we'll let the public know. But we are in winter, and of course it does spread more rapidly uh, in winter. And what sort of Well, you've got staff away and you've got more and more people turning up into um, our hospitals uh, with COVID, so we're monitoring that carefully, but we do expect those numbers to increase, not decrease. And so there was still yep. numbers yep. it's, it's getting up again. So we, it was coming down. I think we got down from memory to in the 400s. But it's, it is winter, so we are expecting an increase, but that's a pretty big jump in one day. So I'm just letting people know that it's out there. I have two staff at the moment who are down with COVID as well uh, in my ministerial office, and it's, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are sick with COVID. Okay, if I can just move on to uh, Coldrake. So as I said, that our Cabinet would, of course, be uh, looking at the Coldrake recommendations uh, today. And uh, after a link, there was a lengthy discussion, but of course everybody absolutely endorsed it. Look, we believe by implementing the Coldrake recommendations, this will make Queensland the most uh, transparent government in the nation. We want to get it right. Uh, we immediately uh, endorsed David Mackey as the chair to lead that um, that interim that task force to implement it, and we're looking to see um, within the next few weeks for David Mackey and the Cabinet Secretary to go over to New Zealand and talk to them about the New Zealand model and how that operates. So we are acting uh, quickly in relation to that. Look, there has been one outstanding question that I know uh, members of the media and the public have been asking, and it's about the um, operation of uh, the dual hatting that um, Professor Coldrake talked about where he said that um, where professional lobbyists during um, election campaigns to place a, a prohibition on that. So, look, Cabinet did endorse uh, today my recommendation that um, three lobbyists will not be uh, working uh, with the government for the remainder of this term. That means approaching the department or approaching uh, minister ministers or staff. And uh, they are Evan Moorhead, uh, David Nelson, and Cameron Milner. So Cabinet has uh, taken that decision today as well, um, immediately implementing um, that recommendation as well. And just to clarify, it happens it's for the rest of the term, then they'll have to make their own decisions. So it, Coldrake talks about lobbyists, so it is the lobbyist, those lobbyists. Okay? All right. And um, any other questions? And then I'll hand over to the DP. She was not a lobbyist at the time. It does say that in the report. Okay. Uh, well, look, the, 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 the poll that matters is the poll on election day. And 
of course, uh, Queenslanders know that, I know that, and uh, everybody else knows that. Uh, what I do know is that the Cabinet and my government are absolutely committed to the people of this state. Uh, we are committed. We have delivered the largest health injection of fund the largest funding into health that any government has ever seen. You only have to look around this city to see the infrastructure that is uh, coming out of the ground. And also, too, we're looking to the future, of course, uh, with the Olympics. But there's a lot of activity that's happening across regional Queensland as well. And of course, if you're a tourist, um, they're absolutely welcome here in Queensland, where we saw the, the largest spend in Queensland out of any other state or territory in the country. So Queensland is definitely the place to be, and we are committed uh, to continuing to make Queensland a better place. Given the integrity issues, the health issues, are you surprised that you've taken an exploit? As I said, the poll that matters, of course, is on election day. But we have a big job to do, and you know we have uh, we have actually, by the Coldrake review, this means that by the government implementing all of those recommendations, it, it means that we will be the most transparent government, and that is a good thing. That is a good, healthy thing for democracy. Like I said last week, we embrace this review, and we're going to get it right. Premier, I've seen the lobbyists. Yes. I took it to Cabinet and I want it to be a Cabinet decision. I think I owe that to my Cabinet colleagues to talk to them about that and uh, they absolutely endorsed it today. Was it a unanimous support from the Cabinet? Absolutely, yes. And have you yes. to those three lobbyists? No, I haven't. Do you no. think that um, other governments, including the federal government, should be adopting a similar rule? In relation to... Well, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see some uniform lobbying laws across the country. I think it would make it much easier level playing field for everybody. Because they've not done Yep, well, that's a, that's a, no, that's a matter for them. I'm implementing the Coldrake Review recommendations that were handed to my government. Coldrake also canvasses lobbying firms um, potentially funneling donations um, and said that your government could consider a ban similar to what's on property developer donations. Has, has that been canvassed at all? Are you considering that? Uh, we will be looking at all of the Coldrake Review, and as I said, we've got David Mackey now heading up that um, interim uh, body. He'll, he'll be looking at everything. Yep. In terms of the, yeah. um, but the recommendations we're definitely endorsing 100%. In yep. terms of the release of the cabinet documents after 30 days, will that also apply to CBRC? Uh, let, let's, let, let David Mackey go over to um, New Zealand and let's see the New Zealand model first. And like I said, this is, this is a huge reform, so we want to get it right. We want to see what New Zealand's doing, and then, of course, uh, we need to implement it here in Queensland. Yeah. But like I said to you, this is transformational. 30 years to 30 days. It doesn't get bigger than that. Premier, um, yes. Shandy Blackburn's mum has spoken today. She's disappointed to hear that there were red flags raised as far back as 2005 with the forensic lab, but there was no action taken. Um, do you know why there wasn't more action taken then? Sorry, in 2005. Um, that's probably a bit before my, t my yeah, time. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got that review um, happening into that. So, look, let, let me get uh, the Attorney General to come back to you on that one in particular. And do you think the Star Inquiry should be um, brought in to investigate the relationship between lobbyists, unions, and government? Um, the star recommendations, I don't have them on me. They were released, um, I think, from memory last Friday by the Attorney General. Uh, they're very comprehensive, and I think the reviewer will be able to make uh, the, his own decision in relation to that. From your the update on the legislation, or the government has any power to start current rules? Uh, DP? Yeah. That's what Thanks. I'm here to talk about. <laughs> uh, uh, I said on Saturday that I would seek further advice from my department uh, subsequent to them providing advice last week and the news of the uh, blood alcohol level of Councillor Williams as well as the fact that police had charged her. Uh, since then she chose to step down voluntarily. The department has advised me that now that she has stood down voluntarily uh, there is no need nor would they advise me to take any further actions. What if, 
Uh, well, let's see uh, what the uh, court process um, uh, results in, but uh, the advice to me at this stage is that it wouldn't be appropriate for me to take any further action. And did you ask the department for similar advice on that then it was charged with drink driving last year? Uh, the, uh, the, I, uh, I didn't ask for that advice uh, last year. Uh, there wasn't the level of um, uh, calling for uh, that kind of uh, action. Uh, I sought that advice in response to uh, the rec uh, formal request that I received, uh, as well as the uh, large volume of media requests that I received. Uh, so I'll I'll then, I never, I never received a formal request to act in that case. In this case, I did receive a formal request to act, uh, as well as, uh, as well as many, many media requests asking what action I would take. What formal request did you receive? Sorry, who was the formal request from? That was from Don Brown. Are there um, other powers to dismiss if you is convicted or pleads guilty? Is there any other charge that you could be charged with? Ah, look again. Um, uh, I'll wait until. Uh, the outcome occurs and then get advice. Um, there are you know, obviously different degrees of penalty that can be applied. Um, the court takes a ma many things into account, including um, driving history, that kind of thing, so it's not possible to really preempt all of the, the hypothetical outcomes there. Uh, Councillor Williams took the step to voluntarily stand aside. That's what uh, many people thought she should have done. Uh, now that she has done that, uh, the advice to me is that uh, it would not be appropriate to take further action. Do you support that move? Uh, well, I, on Saturday uh, I suggested that I thought she should stand aside, and that's what she has done. You don't think that there's a double standard in the advice that you sought to one mayor and another mother? No charge to the same extent. As a uh, minister, when a formal request is made, it is then incumbent on me to get advice. I got advice. I have not taken any action, Lydia. Uh, so the, the, the implication uh, there, I think, is pretty unfair. You can't. Uh, you can't spend a week contacting my office demanding that I take some action. I get advice that says I shouldn't take that action and then accuse me of some kind of double standard. Following the release of um, Peter Coldrick's report and his comments around promotional confidence, will you be releasing the cost of welfare? Uh, as I've said, and I said this again on Saturday, there are contractual arrangements there in place, uh, but I always look to release as much information as we possibly can, and that will continue to be our approach. Do you think the government needs to rebuild the trust of Queensland? Oh, well, we want to implement this report. We want to get on with the job of delivering services to Queenslanders and assuring them that their government has really strong integrity measures in place. That's what this report gives us the chance to do. That's what we've committed to do. We will do that while we continue uh, to do all of the other important work of government, implementing uh, this budget, uh, building the new hospitals that we have uh, announced, continuing to deliver on our economic plan. The, not since uh, since I last spoke to you, so um, the process is um, in train, very well advanced, and uh, there's an acting uh, integrity commissioner. Oh, I think I think uh, any any person coming into the role would want to see um, you know the Coldrake review. So look, it's in train, and hopefully we'll have an answer very soon for everyone. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.